So, I'm lying on bed literally doing this, so it might be a little bit lousier than my other videos. So, I, I apologize from now. Um, okay, so, how do we do code generation and why do we do it? Um, what, sorry? Oh, sorry. Oh, okay, never mind. Um, so, how do we do code generation why do we do it? Um, usually, when you're sending a CAM message, you basically have to pack it. And what does packing mean? It means that like you have 64 bits that you can write to. And then um, basically the action of putting, for example, the information that you want to send into, you know, chunks of 8 bits or chunks of 16 bits, that's called packing. And on the receiver side, you receive this, you know, 64 bit value and you want to unpack it to see what it has. Um, so the action of packing and unpacking are basically as follows, or, or like the ones that I uh, explained to you. And uh, pretty much to be able to do this, uh, we have code generation, which means that we basically have this one file that describes uh, what every single message looks like. So basically, I'm going to show you that file soon. Um, and then using that file, we can generate a whole bunch of C code and even JavaScript code and Python code that will help us with um, basically getting all of these messages um, you know, uh, like if you have some Python script, you can basically use the Python part of this code generated to unpack all the messages or even pack messages and send them. Um, and same goes for C, same goes for JavaScript and all that stuff. So we have all of this in a repository. So CD box shared. So where I have that is called code gen tooling MSXIV. CD code gen tooling MSXIV. So this is the code gen tooling uh, repository for our uh, car right now. So let me just make sure to get pull to see if it's up to date. Get push. Ooh, okay, good. Um, so I'm gonna go out, and then I'm gonna just uh, wipe this off and like start off from the beginning. So rm dash r code gen tooling msxiv. All right. So now I don't have this anymore. Um, let me actually delete code gen tooling as well. Um, so code gen tooling, similar to how we have firmware and firmware XIV, this is similar to that. Code gen tooling was for the last car, and code gen tooling MSXIV is basically the same repository that I cloned to use with a new car. So github.com, uwmits on code gen tooling MSXIV. So let's take a look at this. If we come down here, it says assorted code generation utilities and tooling. Getting started, the Protoss C compiler is needed to build protocol buffers on Ubuntu, blah, blah, blah. Basically, all that means that you have to run these two. That basically just uh, adds the stuff that you need. And then if you already have Protoss C installed, continue from here. Um, and then it says virtual env. So instead of virtual env, I'm actually using conda. Um, so I'm going to show you how to create a new conda environment as well. Um, pip install and then make gen and then if you use pyenth well we don't use pyenth so for this part I'm just going to use conda and then if you need to generate a new proto buff file I don't even know what this means but you can just do make protos but the one thing that I use is the make gen command and I'm going to go over it and see you guys like you guys are going to see how that works so uh, I'm going to clone this git clone this boom Code gen tooling. So now I'm in this repository, right? Um, so conda list, actually. Oh, yeah. Let me. So first we need to go to box. So let's go to box. Um, by the way, I made a mini alias that box already SSH. So box is the same as Baker and SSH on my box or on my computer. So now I'm in Vagrant, right? So I go to shared and I can see code gen tooling is here. Code gen tooling, right? Um, one thing that I did do is that I installed uh, Conda. And how do you install mini Conda? Install mini Conda on Ubuntu. Just Google this. You will find this install on Linux. Actually. This is probably not the best thing. Let's go to Miniconda's uh, actual website. 
There we go. Windows installers, Mac OS installers, and Linux installers. And then, let's see, installing. Yeah, so this is our Linux installer. Huh. So, let's go Miniconda 3. Copy link address. What is this? This is a bash script. So if we do curl this into miniconda install.sh, I think this will download it. Oh, damn. And then miniconda install. If you run it, it'll ask you how do you want to install it. So. I just ignored it for now because I've already have uh, Conda installed. But figuring out how to install mini Conda on your uh, Vagrant should be pretty easy. You guys can probably do some Googling to figure that out yourself. So Conda list ends or something like that. Conda list, yeah. Oof, this is not what I was looking for. Conda and list, yeah. So as you can see, I've already made a Conda environment with this name, so I just want to remove it. Conda remove this. I just want to make sure that I'm starting off from scratch. All right, Conda and remove. Whoops, Conda and remove this dash y. Fuck. All right. On the oh. what does this mean? What does it say? Hmm. On the remove environment. Managing environments. Remove using an environment. Oh, conda remove double dash name and then that. Okay, conda remove name this all. There we go. This is gonna remove everything. All right. Conda create dash n this dash y python equals three. This will create a new conda environment for you guys. And dash y is to say yes to all the default settings. Let me just go grab my charger real quick. All right, so now I am back. So what does Conda do? Conda pretty much installs a new version of Python on your environment. Um, and this way you can have multiple applications of Python with different versions uh, of Python coexisting in your application. So right now, um, let's go, so I've already installed yeah, um, and stuff. so I have cloned this repository. Uh, yeah, this repository. But what's happening here is that um, I want to create a separate environment so that it, all of the I can install all of the necessary packages only for this project. Um, so how do I do that? The way you do it is so right now if I do which Python. It will show me where this Python is coming from. It's from home, vagrant, mini, conda, bin, python. But if I do conda activate, and then um, I named my conda environment same as this repository so that it's easier to remember which one it was. So 
Conda activates this. This will activate this environment. And you can see that it says code gen tooling XIB here. So one thing that I can do now, I can do which Python. You can see that the literally the Python executable has changed from you know home vagrant miniconda bin python to home vagrant miniconda ems code gen tooling bin python. So it will create a new Python environment where I can install all of the stuff that I have. So what's where to from here? We have this requirements.txt file. So I can do vim requirements.txt just to see what's inside of it. So you can see we're installing all of these uh, Python requirements. These are different Python libraries. So how do you install them? Sorry. Uh, pip install. Oh, by the way, your pip is also the conda's pip. So which pip? You can see that it comes from uh, M's code and tooling. So we do pip install dash r requirements. This will look into that requirements file and then install all the pip modules they need. Wow. Yay. Noise. All right, cool. So um, if you take a look at the make file here, oh, sorry, vim make file. So you can see that there's a target called gen. This is the target that generates all of our code. So it generates from the template and then it'll run these commands that you don't have to care about. So all we have to do is to pretty much run make gen, right? However, let's see how our, um, uh, how our messages are generated. So I'm going to open a new tab and then from my home uh, or from my host machine, I just want to change this. So cd shared code gen tooling and then can messages that ask you pub. This is the file that I always change when I want to like add new messages to our car, right? So this is basically this is basically it. There's an example file, just ignore that. Can messages is what we want. So right now I think I was trying to add uh, a message for Avery. So here you can see all the messages in the car. Um, so let's take a look. For example, the message that has the ID of zero is the BMS carrier, which is the BPS heartbeat. And then we have the ID of one, which is center console. Um, the message name is set relay states, right? Um, and then ID two is for getting relay states. Actually, I'm gonna remove this message later. Actually, let's remove it right now because it's not used anywhere in the code. Um, and then, so all of these first nine messages, first eight or nine messages are critical, means that these messages will be acknowledged in the car. Um, so that's one thing to note. Uh, so let's see, lights. So Avery, what kind of uh, messages did you say you needed? I need like the cruise control ones. Oh, I need cruise control. Okay. So message yeah. ID 23 and 24. So 23 is for sync. 24 is for lights. 25 is for horn. So these are the messages that you use. Um, let's go. So 26 is for charger. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. ID 34 is reserved? Huh. Yeah, we don't need to reserve it. Actually, let's go a little bit lower. It's 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Okay, so let's uh, make message number 41 for cruise control. Mm, da, da, da. Now only ID 42 is reserved. Um, all right. So source is com coming from steering. And then uh, 
message name is cruise control. Actually, let's put a space here. And then, and then we can have an U8 bit value. And then we can have command. So Avery, I think the cruise control possible cruise control commands that you can have are as uh, follows. Increase. Oh, okay. Increase. Um, decrease. CC on and CC off, right? Yeah. So if we have an enum that can take one of these four values, so an enum that goes from zero to four, sorry, zero to three, that can take one of these four values then that would do it for you, right? Yeah. So just add that to the um, exported enums. Right? Okay. So it's going to look like EE, so it's going to be type def enum EE cruise control command. Right? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, EE cruise control command. So it's going to be camel case like this. And then inside it's gonna look like EE cruise control command off. And then the same thing on, same thing increase. Right? So, yeah. and then don't forget to put num EE cruise control commands, right? So that's what you're going for. Um, so this is message number 41, uh, source, is, source is coming from steering, message name is cruise control command, can data is this, right? So now I've changed that file to contain it. So if I do a git diff, it will show me uh, what files I exactly changed, right? So it shows me I deleted message number ID2, which I did, and then we added this, right? I usually like to run this git diffs to see what exactly I changed. Right, it's pretty useful. So now what we have to do is to do conda activate. Sorry, um, let's go back here. Now all we have to do is to do make gen, right? And what this does is that it generate, uh, it reads that can proto uh, file and it'll generate new code for us, right? So if you take a look at this directory, there's a new directory called out. And then over here, you can see all the .h files that got generated. These are the same .h files that you see in your firmware code. So let me actually go there and show you. Box shared firmware xiv. So if you go to uh, libraries, code gen tooling, these are the same, sorry, into source. What? Oh no, sorry, ink. So these are the same files that get generated. So what I do every time that you guys ask for a new message, I basically come and like replace these files with the files that got generated here, right? And if you take a look at this, for example, can pack, or actually ignore can pack, so can transmit, right? Uh, what was the name of the message that I added? It was cruise control, right? Oh, look, can transmit cruise control command. And it says command U8 because it was a 8-bit integer, right? So this got defined for you. So in your code, instead of making a new can message and like filling it out, this piece of code already does that for you. So you can just call this function, right? Pretty neat. So one thing that I'm going to do here is um, do git add everything, git status. Oh, sorry, git add can messages sqpb git status uh, git checkout dash b um, okay I need to make a new ticket for this let's go make a new ticket for it and a software board Woo! Jesus taking forever okay create a new ticket
Nice. Okay. All right. Create or add cruise control messages. All right. So this ticket just got created, soft 140. Let's put it in progress. Soft 140 cruise or CC messages. Right? Git commit added cruise control command messages. Git push. We do this so that the upstream knows about this. Nice. And now we go github.com from right site. Bojan tooling MSX ID. Alright. Compare and pull request. So right now, um, you know, we don't have any reviewers. Uh, sorry, we don't have any protection on this, so it will be able to merge from the beginning. But I will change the settings of this repository so that you will require one person's review. But yeah, merge pull request, confirm merge. Yay, this is merged, so I can delete the branch. So over here, get checkout master, sorry, get checkout master, get pull. This will pull. You can see that the master has been updated. To delete this branch, I can do get branch dash D. So that branch is deleted. So now what I have to do is to copy these stuff back into uh, firmware, right? So let's go back to the firmware repository. Uh, get status, get checkout dash V. So I'm creating a new branch over here. Oh, actually, sorry, get checkout master, get checkout dash D, sorry, get branch dash D this and I want to make sure that that branch is getting branched off of master not from soft BMS current SAS prototype get checkout dash B this nice okay so now I want to update whatever was generated to here so I can go to code gen tooling inc right and then I can do cp box share uh, code gen tooling msxiv gen sorry out and then all of the files that end with h here get status you can see all of these files got changed get diff you can see what got changed this message got removed this message got added you can see the id is 41 so id is 41 so 40 41 43 and goes up and then you can see that can pack message for that message got added can transmit got added and then can unpack got added so all the stuff got added get status get add everything get commit added cruise control messages get status get push obviously asks to set upstream um, Right now, I have enabled git hooks, so it's going to run can make format and make uh, lint right before I do that. Um, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I want to make it faster, so I just do add no verify here. Um, I mean, this just makes sure that this gets pushed right away, but you know, over here, it's going to get checked anyways because our continuous integration will check for that. And if it doesn't pass, it won't allow you to merge it. GitHub.com firmware XIV. So we go here. You can see this branch just got added. So I do compare and pull request. Yay, added CC messages, create pull request. And then you can type some messages saying like, oh, I added this cruise control, but all of you guys are seeing it right now. And then I can add reviewers, uh, Avery. And then Gerald, Jess, Ryan, oh, Papirian. there you go, 
Yay, all of you guys are got, got added. Hewitt. Let's be, let's add everyone. So all of you guys can go ahead and like review this, but when you review it, it's fairly easy. Um, you guys have done it properly. But someone can go ahead and accept this so I can merge it in right now from this meeting. So you guys go ahead and do it. But that's pretty much it. I showed you guys how to set up our code gen tooling and also how to add a new cam message, how to generate new files and also add it to the firmware repository. Um, and also make a new branch and you know, yada, 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 all that good stuff. So any questions? Is anything unclear right now? No? I'm gonna assume all y'all are gonna be good. Oh shit. The meeting just got canceled. Oh, these meetings usually have a... Oh, did everyone get kicked out of the meeting? Goofy. Oh no. No, no, no. You guys are here. Okay, no, never mind. Extended. For a second, I thought you guys got kicked out of the meeting. <laughs> okay, never mind. Never mind. We're good. We're good. All right. So, anything else that I missed? Anything unclear? I just want to make sure that all of that gets recorded because this Q and A is going to be good. No? Okay. We're where, good. Where will this be posted? Uh YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Is it all good? Yeah. All right, sick. Well, yeah, the code generation, like you guys can take a look at into the repository to see what it exactly does, but it's pretty cool stuff. Um, but yeah, from now on, you guys know how to do code generation yourself, which is pretty sick. All right. Um, is this getting, oh yeah, it is still going.